she wound up supporting them by taking a job. Plus, now we go back to a, a, what a month ago, six weeks ago, we had Bibi Roca. Yeah, she was homeless as a young yeah. kid, 16, 17 years old. She left yeah. abusive relationships and was on the streets of New Bedford, Massachusetts, which is south of Boston, Mass. You're you're obsessed with that woman. But no, I just remember what we did six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a hard. That's that's that's. I mean, again, and it's it's you know, I I kind of look at it like this. When you're when you're poor, there are certain ways you can make decent amount of money. I would say sex work would not be. Yeah, that's that's one of probably them. not the top on your list, Dave. I, I mean, you might say sex work for somebody who's yeah, the ones uh, who service like the professional athletes that come into town. Well, you're yeah. not even not even not even that <laughs> level, but also just like the you know the prostitute next door, strippers make really good money. And you look if you look at strippers, a lot of them will tell you, "I was homeless. I yeah. left." An abusive situation. That's what I was getting to with my story. She became a stripper, and she supported herself and her brother by being yeah. a stripper. And she made good money. It's great money. It, it really is. I mean, is it more a than stripper, a comic makes. Oh, much more, much more. <laughs> Although I've had people say to me, I had a fr- I had a friend who worked at the Golden Banana as a DJ, and he said that just like comics, some of them are incredibly messed up. Some of them have got stock portfolios, and they've got their acts totally together. And you know, a little bit around the gamut, or a little bit around the gamut. So he thought he thought it was very. They were very much like uh, stand-up comedians. There you the, go. You know, some of them were going to make Just money. Better looking. Spend it all. Oh yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> if, it's sort of like if you're not good. If you're good looking, you become an actor, or you become a stripper. If you're ugly, you become a politician or a stand-up comedian or a radio host. <laughs> good point. Funny, you've done both of those, haven't you? Radio I, I've host. Done, I've done and a, comic. I've, I've done acting too, so I'm over three. <laughs> I, I, well, no, wait a minute. I, yeah, never two mind. Three, I haven't yeah, done politics. Three. Two for three. Sorry. <laughs> I screwed that one up. I, for a minute, I thought I was the, the president of the United States. Also, you've got homeless on homeless crime. Absolutely. I mean, we had, I don't know how many years ago it was, probably like 12 to 15 years ago, we had an individual come up from Louisiana. He did 30 years in prison. He murdered a few people. He did 30 years in prison, so someone thought it would be a good idea to bring him up here and give him a second chance in life. So he came into the homeless shelter. And it lasted about two weeks. He got himself a gun, started yeah. robbing people, started robbing the homeless because they got their social. A lot of homeless people are on social security. Yeah. Yeah. And once a month, they'll get their SSI check or their food stamps. So he was robbing them. He was threatening them. He was having sex with them. He was a hardcore criminal, 30 years in prison. See, that's the type of homeless person that you don't want in your community. That's the really bad Homeless person that's not going to be rehabilitated. First of all, don't feel sorry for that guy. Who would want to move from Louisiana, where it's warm, to New England for a quote unquote fresh start? But you got to think about it. He he just gets out of jail. He's homeless. He was a really big, rugged looking guy. Who who relocated him up here? I mean, whose choice is that? There was a social service agency out of the North Shore of Boston, just a group of ladies, a knitting club who thought it'd be a great idea to give him a second (laughs) chance. (laughs) And little do they know that he comes up here and he's top dog. He's going to victim. He's stronger. He's smarter. He's more street smart. He's going to manipulate and victimize as many people as he can. And that's exactly what he did. And he violated his probation. And they sent him back to prison. Oh, good. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, he, maybe that was his intent. Um, <laughs> go back to prison. But before I do, let well, me go no, we raise have, hell in Massachusetts. Well, how many people leave the incarcerated life, can't make it on the outside because all they know is victimizing people? Absolutely, yeah. And so they're, they're, they're our problem. They're, they're our problem until you guys catch them again and send them back. Yeah, so that example I just gave you, he'd be a foe. He'd be yes. a homeless foe. Oh, you think you think so? <laughs> okay, we get another foe. But but he's obviously he's got victims, so he's homeless and he's a foe, and he's he's victimizing victimizing the people who are victim to victimize, yeah. which is a homeless person with mental health issues. Yeah. We had another case uh, in this area where two homeless people, bigger, stronger homeless people, picked on a weaker, older homeless person and beat him to death. Yeah. Just over nothing other than for the thrill of beating someone up, just being sadistic. Was that what it was? Just the thrill? Just the thrill, the thrill of it. He, he might have gra- they might have grabbed some of his money, but if you're going to grab someone's money, you can just punch them in the face, yeah. take their money. You don't have to beat them to death. Yeah. So the beating to death was more of a sadistic sociopath, or in your terms, Dave, psychopath. Psychopath. <laughs> I like psychopath better than sociopath, but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm working on it. <laughs> And this is the thing. If you're going to kill somebody or if you're going to rob somebody or beat them, who better than 
a homeless person who people don't care about. Yeah, I mean, th- there's a case that just came out in Florida. There was a real estate agent. I don't know the whole particulars because I know it's still unraveling. But there was a real estate agent who was driving around shooting homeless people, and he killed a couple, and he shot a couple. And they're, they're calling him a serial killer right now, so there's probably more dead homeless people in the area that they're still investigating. But if I'm a serial killer, my victim of choice is 15-year-old girls. You kidnap one 15-year-old girl. If she comes from a normal family and she's walking home from the bus, right? they're going to know that within hours. Oh, the community is going to go into a panic. And they're going to have the FBI yeah. and everyone in between and, are going to be looking for that kid. And, and, and this is, yeah, because... 15-year-old, any kind of child, law enforcement responds. Absolutely. Probably as as well as they respond to anything. So all you serial killers out there that are listening, yeah. if you victimize homeless people, now most homeless people are transient. They may be from the community that they're homeless it's, it's in. It's so funny how often you're trying to you're trying to communicate with 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 uh, the bad guys. But if, if you're a, if you're a psycho, if you're a psycho, my listen advice. up over here. We got some great advice for you. <laughs> but they victimize homeless people because yeah. homeless people have no record of where they're supposed to be. You can victimize four or five or six homeless girls or homeless guys. You can kill them. You can shoot them. You can kidnap them. You can dump their body. Yeah. And that no one's going to know they're missing because there's no accountability. Well, they're not so- taking roll call at the homeless shelter typically. Right. Right. And Someone somebody, goes missing, you just assume they jumped on a bus or a train and they went down south or they went somewhere else. But in reality, there's some psychotic serial killer out there victimizing homeless people. Right. Easier victim, harder to get caught when you victimize those type of people. Is, is this, by the way, the, the, the homeless transient victim thing? Is that this is why we can't thumb anymore? I would never thumb. <laughs> Who would, they used to, th- I know you we thumbed to, the Florida yeah. when you were a little kid. We, we, well, I was 17, okay, 18. Well. But yeah, we used to thumb everywhere. Yeah, I wouldn't and, recommend thumbing. <laughs> yeah, and nobody will anymore. Has the world gotten worse or is it just better reporting? No, I think people have gotten smarter. Smarter than yeah, us? No, we've gotten smarter. We People who used to thumb have gotten smarter. We shouldn't, you shouldn't thumb. All right. <laughs> well, you learn, you learn I know something people still new. probably thumb across Europe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they definitely do. I mean, that's part of the culture there. But they're thumbing into think Kiev of, right now? That's a good question. <laughs> I'm going to thumb to Russia. Think, think about that. If you're, if you're like a, a European uh, sociopath, as you like to say, uh, what, would be, what would be a better victim than a, a backpacker? Because Absolutely. same thing, he's transient. You don't know where he is. You don't know and, what and, country he is. And if, like I said, they could be gone for a month before someone notices yeah. them. And in that month, you could have three or four more victims but you, but like I said, you victimize yeah. a fifteen-year-old girl who didn't come home from school. That everything's going to stop in its tracks right there. Yeah, and they're going to start looking good. real fast. Good. good, good. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. So victimizers are everywhere, and homeless are a target. There's hundreds of cases out there. There's many, to my knowledge, that I've experienced. But we just have some real, real psychotic. Ones. And that's the ones we like. Yeah, that's, <laughs> We've covered a couple of these in, in previous podcasts, but the main premise is that they involve homeless people. And the first one was a guy, Semi Lee Williams, down in Palm Beach, Florida. There was a 14-year-old kid, Ryan Rogers, who went out riding his bike, never came home, Ugh. and they found his body shortly thereafter. And it was just a random encounter with a mentally ill homeless person which is the most dangerous. You can be homeless and be passive and not ever use any violence, but it's typically the mentally ill variable that puts people over the edge. It's not an excuse. There's not, right. That's not an excuse for it. But if, if, I'm, if I was going to invite a homeless person over for dinner and I knew their background, one was a paranoid schizophren or schizophrenic off his meds, or the other was just homeless because, I don't know, he didn't like to live in the community, I'd invite that guy over. That guy? Yeah, the guy who was who didn't have mental health issues as a homeless person. Very yeah. dangerous, oh, yeah. very unpredictable, David. Listen, I think anybody <laughs> who's homeless is unpredictable. And this is the and this is one of the issues is as a human being, you're supposed to show kindness towards well, you're not supposed to, but many people feel yeah, that you should show kind, kindness to other people, lend a lend a hand, all of this stuff. But the flip side is a lot of these people are mentally ill. And that makes them potentially dangerous and unpredictable. You bring up a good story. I remember this was just before I retired, probably about a month or two before I retired. 
We had an elderly gentleman, an elderly female. They had just left a restaurant, mm-hmm. and they called, and they said, hey, there's a couple of homeless people asking us to give them a ride to the shelter in the, lo- in the next community, which is Salem, Massachusetts. And we said, or I said, and then my partner got on the phone and said, please don't do that. And what did they do? They let them in the car. They got beat up. They stole their wallet. And probably a half hour later, an elderly couple, 70 years old, came walking into the police station, bloody nose, bloody wow. eye, cut lip. They, 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 didn't even, they didn't take the advice of a seasoned police officer right. who deals with the homeless because they thought they were doing a nice humanitarian right. thing right. by giving them a ride to a shelter. But the homeless people were like, this is easy prey. Come on. Right. Elderly well, people. And this, and this is the other thing. A lot of these people who are homeless, who are, and, and this goes to the sociopaths that we've talked about before, they seem very nice. They, they prey on your on the better parts of a person. Absolutely. To, to exercise the worst parts of them. You know, if they weren't doing this, if they weren't homeless, they might be selling real estate. They might be working in the community. They might be in some other uh, area where a sociopath can succeed. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to remember that they're homeless for a reason. Right. Now, other than the domestic violence situation where someone leaves willingly and they have yep. no other choice, or a young kid leaving an abusive situation, you absolutely need services for that person, and you'd be very sympathetic toward them and try to get them out of that situation before they get engulfed yeah. by the homeless culture or the homeless subculture. But other than that, people who are there because of mental illness, alcohol and drug abuse, or, or just because they're sociopathic and they yep. like to prey on other people, those are the people that can't be helped. I don't care how many services you have out there. Yeah. They, they can't be helped because they don't want to be helped. It's well, the a difference. Other, and the other thing, too, is that once you're in that world, as you're saying, once you're in that world where it's all about survival. Absolutely. Then your ethics and your morality, in many cases, probably just goes away. Yeah, you know what? It's the, just it's about, it's about if you had it to begin a, with. If it, It's homeless. Me and you are both homeless, Dave. It's yep. going to get kind of cold tonight. I'm wearing a T-shirt, and you're wearing a nice sweater. Yep. If I thought I could kick your ass, yep. if we were sleeping together, yep. I might just try to grab that sweater off you because it's survival of the fittest. Oddly you have enough, a nice warm sweater and I got a t-shirt. <laughs> oddly enough, as you were describing that scenario, I was thinking about that scene from one of the early Star Wars movies where they, they cut the, um, uh, the rom-tom, I think they call him. Uh, Luke Skywalker is riding an animal. And he takes out his lightsaber because they're in the cold. They're an ice planet hut. Yeah. And it's cold. And he takes his lightsaber and he cuts the animal in half and he gets inside. And I was thinking I could do that to you. Oh, there you <laughs> go. It's cold enough. <laughs> just cut Dale in half, crawl inside of his skin, and get through the night. It might stink in there, but it'd be probably messy. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but it'd be comfortable. It'd be it'd be comfortable. But yeah, any 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 point in a storm. Uh, any point in a storm. Anyway, what else we got? We have another case of, of a homeless. Individual, he's a young kid, schizophrenic, homeless, and he's the kid I talked about earlier. When he was taking his medication, he's about six three. When he was on his medication, he was about six three, two fifty. Very not not that I would I would never trust him regardless whether he's on his meds or not, but when he was taking his prescribed behavioral medication, we never really had a problem with him. He was very lethargic, he was kind of polite. Okay. And then when he went off his meds, he would get down to 170 pounds crazy as can be. And when he was off his meds one day, he followed an old lady home, 80-year-old lady, talked his way into the house and sexually assaulted her. And she, unfortunately, she had dementia and she couldn't even testify. Uh, that's the that's horrible. That's, and I kind of, I knew why, this why kid. Wouldn't, why wouldn't you trust this kid when he was on his meds? Because I I wouldn't trust him either or because I, I knew the kid when he was around 12 years old. He's a local kid so, from the community. So he was, he, he, he's had mental health issues his whole life. Unfortunately, you feel bad. Yeah, yeah. But there comes a point where you can feel bad for people. Yes. It doesn't mean you have to trust them and it, welcome yeah. them into your house. This is how I feel. Yeah, about I give, I've given them 10 or 15 bucks on many occasions. Yep. Yeah. Take a cab and get the hell out of the community. Right. Go to the next community. Right. Move. Yeah. Jump in this Uber and go about three. Drop him yeah. off three, six, three take towns your, over. Take your bag of stuff. <laughs> take your take your invisible friend and get out of my community. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's sad. It's sad. Yeah. It's it's very it's very bizarre that type of dealing with those people in in their acute stages on the street when they have mental mental health issues. We talked about that before earlier on different podcasts, 
But when you deal with them, like I said, we'll, we can re repeat it a hundred times, very unpredictable, potentially very violent, and you must pull back your instinct.